Becoming a data scientist is more challenging than ever, but it's still a fantastic career to pursue and it's highly in demand allows you to work from home and offers high pay with a median entry level salary of 113,000 per year. But jobs are becoming increasingly competitive, especially at the entry level, and taking a certificate course is not going to be enough. If you live in this false reality, you'll be surprised after spending years with no progress, and by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to land a data scientist job, even without experience or education. I've analyzed exactly how beginners become data scientists to find out the proven blueprint. And at the end of this video, I'll also give you a full roadmap with exactly what to do and what courses to take, step by step. So let's begin. The first step is becoming qualified, and to be qualified, we need to identify what to learn. There are a couple of key skills that we need to have as a data scientist, and a fantastic way to begin is by taking a general data science course. This will allow you to get a light introduction to the field, and the main benefit is that you'll figure out what to specialize in later. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The IBM Data Science Professional Certificate is a great beginner course to achieve this. The next step is probably the biggest challenge for most people, and if you can get through this step, the rest will not be a problem. It's because we need to build a solid foundation, so it's time to dig into some math and statistics. Now, if you have a degree in a quantitative field, you've probably already taken some courses and learned the basics, but regardless, it's time to learn how to apply and use math for data science. Now, you don't have to love math, and the math in school is really nothing like applying it to real concepts and making it useful in data science. And from what I've seen, people tend to find it way easier simply because it's more useful and more fun. And here, there are two great courses, Mathematics for ML and Data Science, and there's also Intro to Statistics by Stanford. Both are available for free, and I'll include them in the roadmap that I'll give you at the end. Now, these courses do by no means replace math at university, but regardless of your situation, they can help raise your level fast. Now, the next step is to learn programming, and there are hundreds of languages and things to learn, and most should just be avoided, because it's just a waste of time. This website has actually collected data from millions of job listings, and it shows that employers primarily look for Python and R skills for data science. Now, there are some other skills and programming languages, but to get a job, you want to learn one of these languages that employers highly desire. Now, don't just take any course on Python or R, because there's too much to learn, especially for Python, and you only need specific skills. So you can take a Python for data science course like this one. It's a fantastic combo, kind of combining Python basics with applying it to data science. And the next step is to learn SQL. Now, SQL stands for Structured Query Language, and it's used to manage relational databases. And it's super important, so learn it. I'm a proud long-term partner of Learn SQL, so I obviously recommend their platform, but there are free options like We3Schools as well. All right, the next step is to learn big data. So big data is literally just what the name suggests. It's big data and large data sets that our conventional tools cannot handle. So a new field was created, and today data can come in such huge quantities. And Spark is one of the most popular tools here, and this course by IBM will introduce you to both in just about 18 hours or so. All right, so now we're getting into some more delicate steps. We've gone through the basics, but now it's time to boost your profile and actually get a job. So some data scientists will focus more on machine learning than others, and it's a very broad role, but you should definitely add some machine learning to your skill set. Now you've already been introduced to it in earlier courses, but now you can give that a boost. ML is a big area, but a course like this one will give you a good introduction to the field. Then you can decide where to go from there, and in the first course you took, you've already learned some data visualization, but here you'll have the option to go even further. And you can either do this using a skill you already know and continue learning it like Python or R, but you can also do data visualization with a specific tool like Power BI or Tableau. The tool is not the deal breaker, well, kind of for employers, but you can use different ones and accomplish basically the same thing. Now, cloud is also an essential skill in data science nowadays, and you don't need to learn every single cloud platform like Amazon, Google, and so on. One common strategy is to focus on learning one, which then helps you transfer your deep knowledge to the rest if necessary and if your company are using some other platform. And the most popular platforms are AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud Platform. All right, so now we're moving to the next section, which is section two. And here it's all about becoming credible because you have the skills, but now you need to be able to show that, right? And courses and certificates are not enough to show your skills. You must do this through projects. And projects are essential for learning because after a certain point, courses will only give you like diminishing returns. And projects are also awesome because they can help you build a portfolio. And that is the secret. 
Start with simple guided projects, such as a guided project on YouTube or some kind of walkthrough. And once you've seen some examples, you can then start doing your own projects. It's going to be a lot of trial and error, but that's how you learn and it's, it's kind of the point. The next step is to upload your projects to a site where you can create a portfolio like on Kaggle. And you can create a notebook and just make your projects public. And this profile can then be shared on your LinkedIn or on your resume when applying for jobs. And once you have a few projects, you can also create a dedicated portfolio website. But the important thing is just that you have a place to show your project somewhere where it looks kind of nice and it's easy to get a quick overview of them. To make sure that you're getting hired, you can also boost your profile with getting certified. And this is different from a course that you take where you kind of get a piece of paper saying that you did it. This is basically when you take a dedicated proctored exam. And when you pass, boom, you're certified. Now, both Google and Microsoft have their own data scientist certifications, but this one, Azure Data Scientist Associate, is very popular and useful if you want to work with Microsoft Azure and their suite. It's not too expensive and you can also renew it for free, which is very nice. Don't stress about this yet. Go through the other steps carefully before considering a certification. There are many different options once you get to that stage. In the description, you'll find a full roadmap with the exact courses I recommend. And to learn about the best certifications, check out this video next, which I made dedicated to explaining all the best search for data scientists. Pretty good deal, right?